Dear friends, welcome once again. In our today's lecture, we are going to study about two different topics. First of all, the chromosomal theory of inheritance proposed by Sutton and Boveri, and then we shall study about morphology of chromosome and all the different aspects related to the chromosome. So let us start. First of all, the study of the chromosomal theory of inheritance. Chromosomal theory of inheritance. Dear friends, by the time when Mendel was finalizing his experiments, his conclusion on the garden pea plant. There was one another scientist, namely William Flemings. There was one scientist, namely William Flemings, and his William Fleming observed the nucleus, studied that nucleus in the cells of salamander. Fleming studied the nucleus in the cells of salamander. Salamander, it is one of the aquatic amphibian animal. Salamander is amphibian animal. And in amphibian animal, William Fleming, yani nucleus sa abhyas kela, nucleus la tathikani tani abhyas la tama observe kela. And he also proposed that the role of nucleus in the process of heredity, in the process of inheritance. After Fleming, the two different cytologists independently, namely Walter Sutton and Theodore Boveri. Sutton and Boveri, these two different cytologists independently perform study on chromosomes on nucleus and after their study on chromosomes, after studying the behavior of chromosomes, they put forth the theory, namely chromosomal theory of inheritance. Means basically, first of all, we people have to understand the chromosomal theory of inheritance is proposed by two different scientists, namely Walter Sutton and Boveri, Theodore Boveri. So here, initially, we people have to understand the highlights of this theory. So let us start the study of that different principles. First principle, the gametes, that is the male gamete, sperm, and female gamete, that is ovum. They carry hereditary characters from parents to their progeny. The sperm and ovum male gamete and female gamete, they carry hereditary characters from parents to their progeny. And that's why the gametes, the gametes are called as a connecting link between the parents and progeny or we can say the gametes are considered as a bridge between two generations. This is the first postulate proposed by Sutton and Boveri. I am going to tell you in Marathi. Male gamete arthat sperm and female gamete arthat ovum he purusha pidi madhe apatyan madhe palakanche parentsche gundharma he sankramit karat asta kari karat asta. And in Munonas, palakan kadun apatyan kade from parents to their progeny as the hereditary characters are carried through the gametes and that's why the gametes are considered as the connecting bridge, connecting link between the two generations, that is parents and their offspring. So let me write here briefly. The gametes acts as connecting bridge or connecting link between two generations, between two generations. Come to the second postulate. We have already studied in human reproduction. At the time of process of fertilization, when 
the sperm penetrates the ovum only the nucleus of the sperm cell is introduced into the ovum it means during fertilization the sperm cell it contribute only its nucleus to the zygote during fertilization sperm cell introduce or contribute only its nucleus to the zygote and not the cytoplasm why the ovum it contribute both its nucleus as well as cytoplasm but we know that the zygote it has the genetic information of both that is of male gamete sperm as well as female gamete ovum the zygote shows genetic information of both parents that is of male parent as well as female parent so it clearly indicates that the genetic information or we can say the material genetic factors responsible to carry genetic information must be present in the nucleus and not the cytoplasm isn't it marathi tun parat samjhun sangto ज्या वेळेला फर्टिलायझेशनची प्रक्रिया घडून येते त्यावेळेला स्पम किंवा स्पम सेल हा फक्त त्याचा न्यूक्लियस त्या ठिकाणी झायगोट मध्ये कंट्रीब्युट करत असतो आणि ओव्हन फिमेल गॅमेट मात्र सायटोप्लाझम आणि न्यूक्लियस हे दोघ कंट्रीब्युट करत असते पण झायगोट मध्ये मात्र मेल आणि फिमेल म्हणजे स्पम आणि ओव्हन या दोघांचं जेनेटिक इन्फॉर्मेशन झायगोट मध्ये प्रेझेंट असतं याचा अर्थ काय होतो की जेनेटिक इन्फॉर्मेशन हेरिडिटरी इन्फॉर्मेशन मटेरियल रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर हेरिडिटी और वी कॅन से द जेनेटिक फॅक्टर्स आर डेफिनेटली प्रेझेंट इन द न्यूक्लियस अँड नॉट इन द सायटोप्लाझम म्हणजेच अनोषित गुणधर्म हेरिडिटरी कॅरेक्टर्स कॅरी करणारं जेही काही मटेरियल आहे ते डेफिनेटली न्यूक्लियस मध्ये असतं आणि सायटोप्लाझम मध्ये नसतं दिस इज द सेकंड पॉइंट हिअर कम टू द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट पुढच्या मुद्द्याकडे आपण वळतोय द क्रोमोझोम्स मस्ट बी प्रेझेंट क्रोमोझोम्स मस्ट बी प्रेझेंट इन पेअर्स इन सोमॅटिक सेल्स ऑर वी कॅन से डिप्लॉइड जनरल बॉडी सेल्स द क्रोमोझोम्स मस्ट बी प्रेझेंट इन पेअर्स इन पेअर्स इन सोमॅटिक सेल्स यु नो सोमॅटिक सेल्स मीन्स जनरल बॉडी सेल्स जनरल बॉडी सेल्स अँड ॲज दि जनरल बॉडी सेल्स वी नो आर ऑलवेज डिप्लॉइड इन सेक्शुअली रिप्रोड्युसिंग ऑर्गॅनिझम सो इन सोमॅटिक सेल्स द क्रोमोझोम्स आर मस्ट बी प्रेझेंट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ पॅर्स फोर्थ पॉइंट द सोमॅटिक सेल्स आर डिप्लॉइड सोमॅटिक सेल्स हॅज टू सेट्स ऑफ जीन्स ऑर क्रोमोझोम्स but the gametes gametes that is male gamete and female gamete has only single set of chromosome or we can say unpaired chromosomes in gametes the chromosomes are unpaired that is single not paired like the somatic cells or we can say general body cells come to the next point chromosomes segregate that is separate from each other during gametogenesis by the process of meiosis the chromosomes separate or segregate from each other at the time of gamete formation at the time of gametogenesis by meiosis as mendelian factors as mendelian factors we have already studied according to the mendel the factors present in the form of pair they always segregate they always separate from each other and enter into separate different gametes that process is called segregation and on the basis of which we have already studied the law of segregation in the same manner here the chromosomes also segregate also separate from each other of each pair just like the mendelian factors this is the fifth point let me write briefly chromosomes segregate or separate
separate during gametogenesis during gamete formation one more principle one more point here the chromosomes obey the laws of inheritance said by mendel chromosomes obey the laws of inheritance said by mendel arthat mendel ne anushiktecha sandarbhatle je siddhant mandle ahet jasa abhyas apla zhalela ahe that laws of inheritance also obeyed by the chromosomes and it clearly indicates that the mendelian factors or genes are present in the chromosomes echavarun he siddha hote ki mendelian factors kiwa mendel jena factors manut hota aaj apan janna genes manto te chromosomes var present asta ani manunach क्रोमोजोम्स हे सुद्धा त्या मेंडेलच्या फॅक्टर्स नुसार किंवा जीन्स नुसार लॉ ऑफ इनहेरिटन्स हे ओबे करत असतात सो हियर वी हॅव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द डिफरंट पॉइंट्स डिफरंट पोस्टुलेट्स प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ दिस थिअरी विद इन 2 मिनिट्स लेट मी टॉक ब्रीफली वन्स अगेन अबाउट द क्रोमोजोमल थिअरी ऑफ इनहेरिटन्स फर्स्ट पॉइंट आय सेड दॅट द गॅमेट्स that is male and female gametes are responsible to carry the characters of parents into the offspring into the progeny and that's why the gametes are considered as a connecting link or bridge between two generations second point we have discussed <clears throat> that during fertilization the sperm cell contribute only the nucleus to the zygote and not the cytoplasm why the ovum female gamete contribute both that is nucleus as well as cytoplasm but the zygote has the genetic information of both parents that is male as well as female it indicates that the genetic information or we can say the material responsible for genetic information is definitely present in the nucleus and not the cytoplasm the chromosomes must be present in pairs in general body cells in somatic cells but in gametes the chromosomes are unpaired chromosomes are unpaired that is we know in haploid cell chromosomes are unpaired chromosomes also segregate that is separate from each other when it occurs meiosis when it occurs gametogenesis at that time both the chromosomes of each pair separate from each other and last we have seen that the chromosomes they obey the principles or laws of inheritance said by mendel it indicates that the mendelian factors or today genes are present on the chromosomes here we have discussed about the chromosomal theory of inheritance now we people have to study about the chromosome a scientist namely hofmeister observed certain nuclear filaments in the pollen mother cells of plant tradescentia tradescentia i said that this hofmeister he discovered certain nuclear filaments in the pollen mother cells of tradescentia and later on that nuclear filaments discovered by hofmeister were named as chromosomes by another scientist namely w walder it means the term chromosome the term chromosome coined by another scientist namely w walder let us talk about the meaning of this term chromosome actually the chroma or chrome it is a greek term chroma or chrome it stands for color or stain and soma stands for body it means the chromosome means 
coloring body or we can say the structure which can receive any color any particular type of stain so chromosome these nuclear filaments chromosome these nuclear components has ability to receive a specific type of biological stain all of you are known stain we know these are different colorful agents colorful materials which are used for the staining of different biological materials that is plant tissues animal tissues or any type of biological material so now these nuclear filaments that is chromosomes they receive a particular type of biological stain very easily and that's why that's why the name is given by wander to these nuclear filaments as chromosome now let us try to define the chromosome how one can define the chromosome chromosomes are considered as the unique cell organelle which has ability of replication or duplication try to understand in 11th we people have studied about so many different types of cell organelles so many different types of cell organelles but the chromosome is considered as the unique cell organelle क्रोमोजोम गुणसूत्र एकमेव सेल ऑर्गैनेल है पेशी अंग है कि ज्यादा रेप्लिकेशन कि डुप्लिकेशन कर क्षमता है टू अंडर गो रेप्लिकेशन और डुप्लिकेशन मीन्स यू नो द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एक्जैक्ट कॉपी ऑफ इट्स स्वतः सारखा दुसरा एक्जैक्ट कॉपी ऑफ इट्स अर्थ एक क्रोमोजोम पास दुसरा क्रोमोजोम तैयार हो गुणसूत्र की संख्या दुप्पट हो रेप्लिकेशन लुप्लिकेशन सो हियर आई टोल्ड यू द क्रोमोजोम्स आर कंसिडर्ड एज द सेल ऑर्गैनेल्स व्हिच आर कैपेबल ऑफ रेप्लिकेशन और डुप्लिकेशन एंड दैट्स वाय द क्रोमोजोम्स आर डिफाइंड एज दीज आर न्यूक्लियर कॉम्पोनेट्स और nuclear filaments nuclear components which has ability which has ability of replication or duplication and play vital role important role in heredity variations mutations and also evolutionary development of species evolutionary development of species here i have explained you the meaning or i will say the definition of chromosome chromosome is defined as the nuclear component which has ability of replication or duplication means chromosome can produce exact copies of itself and they play important role vital role in heredity that is transmission of characters variations mutations as well as evolution that is evolutionary development of species now we people have to study about the morphology of chromosome morphology of chromosome here we have to study about the shape size number structure of chromosome actually the morphology of chromosomes can be best studied in metaphase or anaphase because we know during cell division the chromosomes undergo condensation and they appear as a very distinct structures in metaphase as well as in anaphase and that's why i say that the morphology of chromosomes can be studied properly in metaphase or we can say in anaphase first of all let us talk about the shape of chromosomes actually the shape of chromosomes is changeable because when the cell is in interphase you know interphase isn't it in cell cycle interphase we people have studied in 11 cell cycle madli ji interphase aste 
ज्यामध्ये सेलची ग्रोथ होत असते डीएनए च डुप्लिकेशन होत असत त्या इंटरफेस मध्ये जर सेल असेल तर इन इंटरफेस द क्रोमोझोम्स अपियर ऍज थीन बट स्लाइटली क्वाइल इलॉंगेटेड फिलामेंट और थ्रेड लाइक स्ट्रक्चर विच आर नोन ऍज क्रोमॅटिन और क्रोमॅटिन फायबर्स याचा अर्थ ज्या वेळेला सेल ही इंटरफेस मध्ये असते वेन द सेल इज इन इंटरफेस ऍट दॅट टाइम द क्रोमोझोम्स अपियर थीन इलॉंगेटेड थ्रेड लाइक स्ट्रक्चर थीन इलॉंगेटेड थ्रेड लाइक स्ट्रक्चर नोन ऍज क्रोमॅटिन और क्रोमॅटिन फायबर्स इन मेटाफेस द क्रोमोझोम्स अपियर क्वाइट थिक स्लेंडर रॉड लाइक स्ट्रक्चर थिक स्लेंडर एंड रॉड लाइक स्ट्रक्चर बिकॉज यू नो वेन एवर इट स्टार्ट द प्रोसेस ऑफ सेल डिविजन दॅट क्रोमॅटिन फायबर्स अंडर गो कंडेन्सेशन दॅट इज क्वाइलिंग अँड सुपर क्वाइलिंग अँड दस द क्रोमोझोम्स बिकम मोर अँड मोर डिस्टिंक्ट अँड दॅट्स वाय इन मेटाफेस द क्रोमोझोम्स अपियर क्वाइट थिक स्लेंडर रॉड लाइक स�ट्रक्चर in anaphase the chromosomes may appear either rod like or may appear curved that is horse shoe shaped or may appear as capital v may appear as j capital j of course it is depend upon the position of centromere in that chromosome अर्थात हे वेगवेगळे आकार क्रोमोझोमचे त्या गुणसूत्रामध्ये त्या क्रोमोझोम मध्ये सेंट्रोमियरची पोझिशन कुठे आहे याच्या आधारावर अवलंबून असत अँड दॅट वी शॉल स्टडी इन आवर नेक्स्ट टॉपिक टेम्पररी यू जस्ट रिमेंबर दॅट द क्रोमोझोम्स द शेप ऑफ क्रोमोझोम इज चेंजेबल इन इंटरफेस क्रोमोझोम्स अपियर थी लॉंगेटेड थ्रेड लाईक स्ट्रक्चर in metaphase chromosomes appear quite thick distinct slender rod like structure while in anaphase they may appear as rod like straight or curved horseshoe shape or maybe v or j shape now let us talk about the size it also varies from species to species but on an average the length of chromosome length of chromosome is from 0.1 to 33 micron and width ranges from 0.2 to 2 micron 2 micron now let us talk about the number number of chromosomes the number of chromosomes are constant fixed in the cells of any particular species it means that the total number of chromosome the total number of chromosome present in the cells of any particular living organism belonging to same species are fixed or constant of course the number of chromosomes are variable from species to species yacha arth vegvegya jati cha sajivan madhe vegvegya jati cha sajivan cha peshin madhe adhalnari gunasutranchi sankhya yacha madhe tafavat ahe yacha madhe farak ahe pan eka species madhe enarya sarva sajivan cha peshin madhe asnari gunasutranchi chromosome chi sankhya hi fixed aste and that's why i said that the number of chromosomes are constant in a cell of any particular species the number of chromosome usually ranges between 8 and 50 the number of chromosome usually ranges from 8 to 50 or between 8 and 50 i would like to talk little bit more about the number of chromosomes let me tell you that the lowest number of chromosomes that is only two chromosomes occur in a fungus in 
fungus namely mucor himalis in a fungus mucor himalis and animal ascaris megalocephala in these two organisms only two chromosomes are present in their cells while the highest number of chromosomes occur highest number of chromosome occur in plant adis tongue fern it is a plant you know pteridophytic plant its scientific name is ophioglossum reticulatum ophioglossum reticulatum in this fern plant the number of chromosomes are 1262 and in one protist you know protist the organism belonging to kingdom protista means obviously it is unicellular organism namely olocantha olocantha in this protist in this unicellular organism the highest number of chromosomes are present that is 1600 1600 so here we have discussed about the number of chromosome now all of you are know that in sexually reproducing organisms the gametes are haploid in nature in sexually reproducing organism gametes are haploid in nature haploid in nature it means the gametes contain only single set of chromosome gametes contain single set of chromosomes it means in gametes the chromosomes are unpaired there is a single set of chromosome and we know this condition is represented by letter small m actually this single set of chromosome that is this haploid condition represent the primary basic number of chromosome in that organism try to understand sexually reproducing organisms madhe sexually reproducing organisms madhe aplyala maite ki gametes are haploid asta haploid is a the gametes madhe there is only a single set of chromosome ani paryayane te chromosomes he unpaired asta ani ya gametes madhe asnari chromosome chi sankhya ahe gunasutran chi sankhya ahe that number of chromosome that haploid number of chromosome represent the primary basic number of chromosome in that organism or we can say in that species primary basic number of chromosome and we know in somatic cells that is in general body cells in somatic cells there are presence of double or two sets of chromosome double or two sets of chromosome and you know this condition is known as diploid condition or such cells are said to be the diploid represented by 2n as in such diploid somatic cells in such diploid somatic cells as there are presence of two sets of chromosomes it means we can say that chromosomes are present in the form of pairs sometime there may be presence of three sets of chromosome there may be presence of three sets of chromosome and that condition is called as triploid represented by 3n or may be presence of four sets of chromosomes this condition is called tetraploid and is represented by 4n and so on that is pentaploid five sets of chromosome hexaploid that is six sets of chromosome etc now you must know that the ploid here this term ploid or ploidy this word stands for this word stands for the number of 
or degree of repetitions of primary basic number of chromosome try to understand ploidy or ploid this word stands for degree of repetitions of primary basic number of chromosome primary basic number of chromosomes manje kay te atta mi tumhala sangitlo the number of chromosome or haploid set of chromosome number of chromosome in gamete or haploid set of chromosome represent the primary basic number of chromosome in that species now say for example in case of any particular xyz organism कुठल्या तरी एखाद्या एक्स वाय झेड ऑर्गॅनिझम मध्ये समजा हॅप्लॉइड सेट ऑफ क्रोमोझोम्स कंटेन ओनली फोर क्रोमोझोम इट मीन्स इन दॅट एक्स वाय झेड ऑर्गॅनिझम द प्रायमरी बेसिक नंबर ऑफ क्रोमोझोम्स आर फोर प्रायमरी बेसिक नंबर ऑफ क्रोमोझोम्स आर फोर रिप्रेझेंटेड बाय लेटर एन नाव ऑबियसली टू एन मीन्स वॉट 2n means diploidy you know di stands for 2 means here diploid condition shows eight chromosomes what happened here the primary basic number of chromosome get doubled get doubled in 3n 12 in 4n 16 in this manner what i want to tell you that ploidy or ploid this stands for the degree of repetition of basic number of chromosome degree of repetition of haploid number of chromosome and that's why here diploid diploid stands for double tri stands for 3 tetra stands for 4 okay second thing in addition to that one must know when the chromosomal number in the cell are exactly multiple of primary basic number of chromosome when the chromosomal number is exactly multiple of primary basic number of chromosome then it is called as euploidy euploidy and such organisms are called euploids try to understand say in this example haploid condition has four chromosomes in diploid 8 in triploid 12 in tetraploid 16 now here you can notice that all these diploid triploid tetraploid they are showing exact multiple of basic number of chromosome exact multiple of basic number of chromosome अर्थात जे प्राइमरी बेसिक नंबर ऑफ क्रोमोजोम्स है उदाहरण मध्य इफ सपोज फोर क्रोमोजोम अर्थात एट ट्वेल्व सिक्सटीन का चार चे एक्ट मल्टीपल है जर से स्पेशज मध्य ऑर्गैनिजम मध्य बेसिक नंबर ऑफ क्रोमोजोम्स या बरबर मल्टीपल एक्जैक्ट मल्टीपल गुणसूत्र क्रोमोजोम की जो संख्या तो दिस कंडीशन इज कॉल्ड एज द यूप्लॉइड एंड सच ऑर्गैनिजम्स आर सेट टू बी यूप्लॉइड्स बट व्हेन एवर लिसन बट व्हेन एवर देर इज आइदर एडिशन और डिशन ऑफ वन और मोर क्रोमोजोम आइदर एडिशन or deletion of one or more chromosome to the normal number of chromosome in the cell then it is called as the uneuploidy uneuploidy just now we have seen euploidy as a artha mi kay sangitla euploidy means it is the condition in which the cell or organism shows exact multiple of basic number of chromosome but when there is not exact multiple number of chromosome then it is called uneuploidy un stands for absent euploidy is not seen therefore known as the uneuploidy manje aplyala jo udaharan dyaycha zhalo to you know that in human being the haploid number of chromosomes are 23 isn't it and diploid number of chromosome 46 isn't it now here if 
either one or more number of chromosome get added or deleted from this 46 then we can say that condition as uploaded because you know 46 it is deployed condition 46 it is exactly multiple of basic number of chromosome that is 23 म्हणजे जर मानवाच्या सेल्स मध्ये ह्युमन सेल्स मध्ये 46 क्रोमोसोम्स असतील तर अर्थातच ते 23 चा एक्झॅक्ट मल्टिपल आहे म्हणजे ही कंडिशन झाली यूप्लॉइडी पण अबनॉर्मली जर या ठिकाणी 46 क्रोमोसोम्स मधला एखादा क्रोमोसोम कमी झाला किंवा ऍड झाला एक किंवा अनेक तर त्याला आपण म्हणणार आहोत अनयूप्लॉइडी अनयूप्लॉइडी now this aneuploidy is further of two types. Ya yeah, aneuploidy cha parat don prakar padde jata. Such as hypoploidy, hypoploidy and hyperploidy. We know hypo stands for less, hyper stands for excess. Hypoploidy means in this condition either one or more number of chromosomes get lost from the normal number of chromosome in the cell. Cell madhe guna sutranchi ji sankhya hai. Normal zo number hai. Techa madhun ek kiwa anek guna sutra chromosome zha kami zhali ta artha diyala matla zhali hypoploidy. And how many chromosomes get lost on the basis of which it is of again two types. Echa parat don prakar padle zati. Let me tell you. First of all, monosomy. Monosomy. Mono stands for one. It means single chromosome get lost. Single chromosome get lost. And it is represented by 2n minus 1. 2n minus 1. 2n stands for the deployed condition. Minus 1 stands for loss of one chromosome. Or nullisomy. Nullisomy. It is represented as 2n minus 2. Means two chromosome or direct one pair of homologous chromosome get lost. Nullisomy. Hyperploidy. Hyper in the sense you know excess. Hyper ya shabda cha aple la maite. Excess asa te cha atho to. Ma kiti chromosomes add ho ta hai. Te avar te cha prakar pad le zati. Se trisomy. Trisomy. It is represented as 2n plus 1. 2n plus 1. Means what? Out of a number of pairs of homologous chromosome, one chromosome get added in any one. One chromosome get added in any one pair of homologous chromosome. Artha, kya sajiva cha sel madhe? Deployed condition madhe je guna sutra hai, chromosome sa hai. त्या पैकी कुठल्याही एका होमोलॉगस क्रोमोझोमच्या पेअर मध्ये जर एक क्रोमोझोम ऍडिशनल आला तर त्याला म्हटलं जाईल ट्रायझोमी म्हणजे आपण म्हणूया की या ठिकाणी एखादी होमोलॉगस क्रोमोझोमची जोडी आहे सपोज हियर इज अ सिंगल पेअर ऑफ क्रोमोझोम जस्ट इमेजिन अँड वन मोर क्रोमोझोम इफ गेट ऍडेड हियर मींस नाउ हियर आर थ्री क्रोमोझोम्स इजंट इट ऍज फार ऍज कंसर्न विथ ह्युमन बीइंग Suppose the deployed number of chromosomes are 46 plus 1. So, total number of chromosomes will be 47. Human being made, aplala maite deployed condition made chromosome chi sankhya is 46. And a chromosome the adds hala to honare 47. Yala matla zai trizomy. One additional chromosome is added. If two chromosomes get added, then it is called tetrasomy 2n plus 1. Means now here are three chromosomes, two normal and two abnormal. So total number of chromosome 4, tetrasomy. Okay. So here we have discussed about the number of chromosome. Now actually when people have to study about the structure of chromosome, other protection upon chromosomes the structure is Structure of typical chromosome. The physical structure of chromosome can be 
best studied during metaphase and anaphase because we know that the chromosomes undergo condensation coiling supercoiling in metaphase and also in anaphase and therefore they appear very distinct very prominent in metaphase the typical chromosome consists of different components here i am going to explain you that components by drawing a suitable and colorful diagram the first component chromatids chromatids each metaphasic chromosome consists of thick dense material called matrix let me explain you here i am going to show the structure of chromosome physical structure of chromosome i said that each chromosome consists of a thick and dense material that is matrix and two identical components called chromatids two identical components called chromatids which lie side by side which lie side by side along the length of chromosome which lie side by side along the length of chromosome and held together at one point known as centromere known as centromere let me explain you i said that each chromosome consists of a thick dense centrally placed material known as matrix and in this matrix there are presence of two identical components that is chromatids chromatids that chromatids may be known as chromonema chromonemata chromonema whatever it may be and these two chromatids lie side by side along the length of chromosome yacha arth eka chromosome madhe don chromatids present astat i said lie side by side and they are held with each other at one point known as centromere centromere the place or point where these two chromatids are held together known as centromere actually the chromatids chemically made up of dna nucleoproteins rna few metal ions as well as few enzymes let me tell you briefly also about the percentage of different components which form the chromatid the chromatid each chromatid consists of 40% of dna 50% of histone proteins 50% of histone proteins just 8.5% of non histone proteins these proteins histone and non histone proteins are called nucleoproteins in addition to that chromatids also contain rna just 1.5% then metal ions in very trace quantity and also enzyme enzymes also in trace quantity so here we are discussing about the chromatids i said that each chromosome consists of a thick dense material that is matrix enclosing two identical components which lie side by side along the length of chromosome and these two chromatids are held together at a point called as centromere here each chromatid consists of chemically dna rna metal ions and nucleoproteins the percentage is mentioned here now at the centromere at the centromere each chromatid shows a small plate like structure at the centromere each chromatid shows a plate like structure this plate like structure 
is called kinetochore. This platelet structure is called kinetochore to which the spindle fibers or spindle tubules join at the time of cell division. In 11th we people have studied about the cell division. We have discussed about the spindle fibers. We all are known. So at the time of cell division that spindle fibers, spindle tubules join to the chromosome at kinetochore and at this region as the chromosome appears slightly narrow, constricted, therefore the centromere is also known as primary constriction. Primary constriction. Now come to the second component. Second component arms. The parts of the chromosome on the two sides of centromere. The parts of chromosome on the two sides of the centromere are known as arms. You can see in the diagram. Here we have shown the centromere and on these two sides of centromere this part represents one arm and this part represents another arm. Now that length of arm, size of arm may be equal or may be unequal. It depends upon the position of centromere in that chromosome. I said that the arms, the arms on both sides of the centromere may be equal or may be unequal and it depends upon the position of centromere. Now in this diagram, the centromere is not exactly at the middle, it is slightly away from the middle and that's why one arm appears slightly shorter, one arm appears slightly longer. Of course, on the basis of position of centromere, there are different types of chromosome that we are going to study after a few minutes. Now, if the chromosome is having equal sized arms, then such chromosome is called isobrachial chromosome. Isobrachial chromosome. Iso stands for cell. Here brachial stands for the arms. Isobrachial. And if the size of arms in that chromosome are unequal, then it is known as heterobrachial. Heterobrachial. Heteros stands for different or unequal. Now, come to the next component that is secondary constriction. Secondary constriction. Besides primary constriction, you know, at the centromere, the chromosome appears slightly narrow and that's why that centromere may be known as primary constriction. Now, besides primary constriction, in some chromosome, either one or two additional constrictions are present. Besides primary constriction, in some chromosome, not in all chromosome, in some chromosomes, either one or two additional constrictions are present they are known as secondary constriction i said that either one or two if there are two secondary constrictions then one secondary constriction is present on one arm and second secondary constriction another secondary constriction is present on another arm it means that if there are two secondary constrictions, both secondary constrictions are not present on the same arm. Let me show in the diagram. Suppose here is a secondary constriction. Now this secondary constriction is responsible for the formation of nucleolus. Secondary constriction plays important role in the formation of nucleolus nucleolus all of you are known in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells there are presence of nucleoli either one or many and the secondary constrictions is responsible for the formation of nucleolus nucleoli and that's why it may be called as nucleolar organizer organizer 
nuclear load organizer. And the chromosome with such nuclear organizer, the chromosome with secondary constriction is known as nucleolar chromosome. The same thing is that the secondary constriction is that chromosomes were present as the same thing. The chromosomes were, the chromosomes were, secondary constriction is the nuclear organizer present as the same Asha chromosomes la nucleolar chromosome asamanta. And you must know that in most of the organisms, single nucleolar chromosome is present in haploid set of chromosome. In most of the organism, single nucleolar chromosome is present in haploid set of chromosome. Haploid set of chromosome made commit kami ek asha prakarsa nucleolar chromosome added to. अर्थात डिप्लॉइड सेल मध्ये दोन्ही किंवा टू ऍज फार ऍज कन्सर्न विथ ह्युमन बीइंग लेट मी गिव यू एग्जांपल ऍज फार ऍज कन्सर्न विथ ह्युमन बीइंग हॅप्लॉइड सेट ऑफ क्रोमोसोम कंटेन सच फायू क्रोमोसोम फायू क्रोमोसोम लो क्रोमोसोम नंबर 13 14th 15th 20th एंड 21 These five chromosomes are nuclear chromosome in human being. Anyway, so here we have studied what does it mean secondary constriction. Now, the next component is satellite. Satellite. Satellite means it is a short segment beyond secondary constriction. A short segment of chromosome beyond secondary constriction is known as satellite please look at the diagram here we have shown secondary constriction this short segment of chromosome beyond secondary constriction is known as satellite and the chromosomes which show such satellite are known as sat chromosomes sat chromosomes ज्या क्रोमोसोम्स मध्ये अशा प्रकारचा सॅटेलाइट दिसतो अशा क्रोमोसोम्सला सॅट क्रोमोसोम्स असं म्हणतात एंड फाइनली द लास्ट कंपोनेंट इज टिलोमियर टिलोमियर्स टिलोमियर्स मीन सिंपली द टर्मिनल एंड ऑफ क्रोमोसोम टर्मिनल एंड ऑफ क्रोमोसोम आर नोन एज telomeres let me show in the diagram here is a telomere here is a telomere terminal end artha chromosome so ji toko ahe tanna telomeres asa matla jato and what is the significance of these telomeres telomeres prevent the attraction and attachment of two chromosome they prevent the attraction and attachment of two chromosome means we can say somehow these telomeres seal the end of chromosome somehow these telomeres a seal the end of chromosomes so that another chromosome cannot be stuck to that particular chromosome but these telomeres facilitate the attachment of chromosome to the nuclear envelope to the nuclear membrane is that clear here we have studied about the structure of typical chromosome now we have to study about the types of chromosome classification of chromosome chromosomes are classified by so many different ways but first of all we have to study about the types of chromosomes on the basis of position of centromere and relative length of arms and then types of chromosomes on the basis of number of centromeres so let us talk about the types of chromosomes classification of chromosomes types of chromosomes or classification of chromosomes first of all the classification of chromosomes on the basis of position of centromere position of centromere very simple 
there are four types of chromosome such as first one metacentric chromosome metacentric chromosome that itself indicates meta stands for middle the chromosome in which centromere is present exactly at the center exactly at the middle of chromosome let me show here in diagram suppose here is a chromosome and centromere is present exactly at the middle javela centromere ha chromosome cha exactly middle agdi barobar madhya bhagavar cha asel ta asha chromosome la metacentric chromosome matla jay and thus in such chromosome the length of both arms is equal okay means it is isobracial type of chromosome arthat centromere ha madhyabhagi aslyamule doni je arms ahet tanchi lambi hi saman ahe identical ahe metacentric at the time of mitosis during anaphase these chromosomes appear v shaped you know that whenever it occurs the anaphase the spindle fibers pull the chromosomes away from each other and we know the spindle fibers attached to the centromere or kinetochore and that's why during anaphase such metacentric chromosome appear v shaped second type sub metacentric chromosome sub metacentric chromosomes look sub metacentric chromosome means the chromosome in which centromere is not present exactly at the middle but slightly away from the middle slightly away from the middle not exactly at the middle but slightly away from the middle such chromosome is called sub metacentric and due to such sub metacentric condition both arms are not equal slightly unequal one arm is slightly shorter another arm is slightly longer such sub metacentric chromosome appear l shaped in anaphase l shaped in anaphase come to the third that is acrocentric chromosome acrocentric chromosome in this type the centromere is present near one end centromere is present near one end therefore one arm is very long another arm is very short and such chromosomes appear j shaped j shaped during anaphase and the last type is telocentric chromosome telocentric chromosome here the centromere is present exactly at one end centromere is present exactly at one end and that's why there is only single arm another arm is totally absent and hence such telocentric chromosome they appear i shaped or we can say rod like during the anaphase here we have discussed about the types or classification of chromosomes on the basis of position of centromere and relative length of arms now let us talk about the classification of chromosome on the basis of number of centromere on the basis of number of centromere there are four types of chromosomes on the basis of number of centromere such as monocentric dicentric polycentric and acentric very simple monocentric type of chromosome you know mono again stands for one centric stands for centromere so the chromosome in which only one centromere is present and it is most common type of chromosome most commonly occurring most common type of chromosome monocentric then 
डायसेंट्रिक डाय स्टैंड फॉर टू सो द क्रोमोजोम इन विच टू सेंट्रोमियर्स आर प्रेजेंट सच डायसेंट्रिक क्रोमोजोम्स ऑकर इन मेज प्लांट इन मेज प्लांट देन थर्ड पॉलीसेंट्रिक क्रोमोजोम्स पॉली स्टैंड फॉर मेनी द क्रोमोजोम विथ मेनी नंबर ऑफ क्रोमोजोम्स इट इज फाउंड इन वन राउंड होम एंड असेंट्रिक असेंट्रिक सेंट्रोमियर इज एबसेंट वेरी रेयरली फाउंड असेंट्रिक सेंट्रोमियर इज एबसेंट इट मे बी कॉल्ड एज द होलोसेंट्रिक वेरी रेयर सो हियर वी हैव कंप्लीटेड द डिस्कशन ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ क्रोमोजोम before to that we have studied about the chromosomal theory of inheritance then about the chromosome morphology of chromosome and here the classification of chromosomes that's all so let us stop here today and as usual all of you take great care of yourself thank you and bye